It's now time for Talking Boxing with Billy C. Hey, we're coming to you live from the Billy C. Studio in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Caligero, and it's time for Talking Boxing with Billy C. Good morning, good day, good evening. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Linda from Southampton. Hey, Linda from Southampton. What's on your mind? Listen, I'm watching you instead of Fox News from now on. There you go. I want to know. I love that. What do you think of the Madonna Mayweather fight? Because I love Madonna. I don't know what to think. I'm going to be Madonna's biggest fan that night because I, I, I hope that... You know, he wins the fight. But but this is what I think. I think if Madonna goes in that fight with no respect for Floyd, and I mean Which no he respect. Won't have. But well well, you know, I I, that that's what I thought, Linda. That's what I thought. Um but you know, after listening to Robert Garcia and, and, and hugging Floyd and being happy that they're getting the opportunity, I I'm not so sure anymore. I uh, that's that's like BS, unless Madonna's going to get a good payday and retire. Well, which would I, I be mean, a shame. And you know what, Billy? There are too many pay for view boxing matches. Well, that's, you know what? The fans are letting that happen. You think the Canelo Angulo fight should have been a pay per view? I thought Angelo was under anesthesia, and I did pay 50 bucks for it or 55. I don't even remember. No, I, no. that was an HBO fight at best. With me tonight, adding his color commentary, is the undisputed heavyweight champion of Boxing Talk Radio from New York City, Bill Calagero. Bill, great to have you here tonight. This is not only a huge fight for Marginovich, Billy, but it's a big, big fight for Lindsey Garbat. It certainly is, James. Both these women are in top physical condition. They look fantastic in the way. And they both have a lot of support here. Both their families are here. It ought to be a great Al fight. Al Heyman, who's the quack quack king of the quack quack king of the duckers. Now, Al Heyman has a blueprint that's worked for padding his own bank account and for padding his fight fighters' bank accounts. And basically, you know, he sits the guy down and he says, "What do you want out of this? You want money, or do you want fame?" And because a fighter is making a living. And because a fighter has responsibility and family and blah, 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 blah. And don't forget, Adonis Stevenson, he's got some bitches he's got to take care of because, you know, doesn't he, does he still, is he, is he still a pimp? Is, is, is he still a pimp? I, I think he is. But anyway, uh, they call him Huggy Bear or something on the street. Anyway, he says, I want more money. You know, so Al Heyman says, well, let's let's run, man. Forget it. You, you know, it, there's two kinds of fighters, Al Heyman says to Stevenson. He says there's the kind that make the money and the kinds that make the history. You want to make money or you want to make history? And Stevenson says, I want to make the money. So they left. And uh, the bottom line is, is that that may be good for Stevenson. And when you put the business hat on, you can't really argue. Uh, honestly, you can't. But when you put the boxing purist hat on and you put what we all want, most of us want from this sport, it's killing it. You know, uh, Sal Sinicola uh, is actually a fighter. He's 54 years old. He fought last year. Maybe you two wow. can get in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's more than double my age. <laughs> wow. Hey, so what do you think, Sal? I mean, I'm old. He's, 50, he's 15 and over, 15 knockouts. You know? Yeah. Well, what would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. it would. But listen, we appreciate you stopping by, and I'm yeah. glad we had a chance to chat with you yeah, because we you. had just been saying, well, we don't know much about about this guy yeah. and poof you're here so that's if you are going through the motions and just watching any old fight and buying any old fight and going to any old fight because you, it's there just because well then you're feeding the fire of us being shoved crap fights down our friggin throats you know like i tell you all the time the the fan is actually the the driver here you just gotta put your foot on the brakes when you have to you know, if you don't like a pay-per-view, you're not dissing the sport by not buying it. You're actually saving the sport by not buying it. Now, of course, people can say, ah, see, nobody bought it. There's no more interest. No, no, that's wrong. That's the, that's, the, that's the punk way out. You know, that's the wimp way out. You know, a real promoter, a real boxing person will say, hey, why didn't anybody buy this? You know, we got to give them a better product for their hard-earned money. So just don't go through the motions. Trust me, it'll work. I would say at least 90% of the time that we talk about you-know-who on this show is a result of you guys, the emails. I, for one, have had it, and, and I really don't want to talk about this clown anymore. You know, so uh, anyway, with that said, Billy C., your hate for Floyd Mayweather 
the best boxer of this era is out of control. Mayweather is simply the current king of boxing. I'm sure you know he has now earned the right to dictate whom he fights and on what terms. Your ridiculous hate for Mayweather has now uh, turned into an insane campaign against the greatest boxer of the last decade. You know, I get criticized for being a hater of Floyd Mayweather because I don't think he's the greatest fighter of, of, of even this of even today. I don't. I don't I clearly don't think he's the greatest fighter of all time. And because of that, I get called a hater. But what kills me is that the Floyd fans and the Pacquiao fans, and I've said this a hundred million times, and I've given Floyd credit for his his antics in the ring. When he does something stupid outside the ring, you're damn right I I, I jump all over it. As far as the fighter's concerned, I can root against him. I will be the first one to say that I, you know, I look forward to the day he fights a, a real fighter and possibly challenges himself. I look forward to that. When there was one world champion, if you were ranked at number ten, you were a kick-ass fighter. You were good, you know. And you know, then the number ten guy, you know, he fights somebody among the top ten, and but da he goes up and he earns that number one spot, and then that's the guy who fights the champ. Well, now, you know, it's just a matter of positioning, you know. Uh, what can you put in this hand to make me write your fighter's name with this hand in our top 10 so he gets a world title shot? Come on, man. You know, when you're looking at 34 fighters among four sanctioning bodies in their top 12, and so many of them have never fought anyone that's in the top 12, I, I, do I have to say more, man? You know, if you're in your 30s right now, um, you know, you don't know any different boxing than what you're seeing. And I could see where you ha are being misled to believe that, you know, a fighter like you know who is so great and a fighter like you know who is, you know, uh, just got all these all this talent and all of this stuff, you know, and then you start to accept these these other things, you know, like instead of fights, like my main man Larry Hazard says, you know, instead of having a fight or a contest or a matchup, we have a showcase. And, you know, if you accept that and and you like it, that's fine. I mean, then you're getting what you want, you know, um, but that's the way boxing seems to be going. You know, it seems to be, you know, it's not how good the fighters are anymore. It's who they're signed with. You know, if they're signed with the right promoter and they get the right fights and they get the right network and they get all it is, then they're on TV and then you see them and blah, 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 blah. You know, um, at one point in time, uh, boxing was, was uh, you know, king of the mountain type of, uh, of sport, meaning that, you know, the best were the champions, you know, and if you thought you were better, you would go and, and fight them and win. You know, Alex Papali and I do uh, the Blast from the Past segment every week. And we talk about fighters from yesteryear. And uh, there's errors that we've discussed where, um, you know, a fighter would get and say, I'm the champion. And he would go in public and say, I'm the champ. I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. If, if you don't think I'm the champion, come and fight me. You know, and, and that's the way it was. You know, and then we had titles and then we had defenses and all of this stuff. You know, so uh, there's a very good uh, chance that, that, you know, we're seeing the, the foundation of our sport being changed forever. And really, the, the people that are going to decide whether it's changed forever or not are you, the fans. If you accept these kinds of fights, uh, one-sided fights or, or showcase fights, well, guess what? That's the way it's going to be. You know, if, I'm, if there's a fight coming up, and uh, let's say Dax Khan and myself are talking about a fight on the phone. We talk on the phone a lot, and we start discussing a fight. And I say, you know, Dax, uh, Fighter A is going to win, and, and I give him a reason why. And Dax says to me, you know what? I, I disagree with you, Bill. I think Fighter B is going to win, and he gives me a reason why. Well, guess what? That's a 50-50 fight in our opinion, you know, and we're going to tune into it, and we're going to watch it. But when Dax and I talk about a fight that we both know who's going to win, that's not a 50-50 fight. And that seems to be what's happening with our sport today. And it bothers me. And I think that, uh, you know, really at some point in time, uh, the ball, uh, if it's not already in, in the fans' hands, it's going to really be in the fans' hands. And if they don't say no, and I think a good indication uh, is some of the big fights that are coming up, uh, specifically one in May, you know, everybody's complaining about that fight. Don't buy it. That's the only way your message will get across.